Yeah, um, I'd uh, just sit down here quickly. Sit down, stay down. Um, so yeah, my name's John Dolan. Um, I was brought up in, in Islington on the King Square Estate in North London. And my earliest memory is uh, watching Pink Floyd make the video uh, for another brick in the wall where all the kids are running about throwing the ball to each other. I was off school with an asthma attack that day. Uh, I was about seven years of age. I also, also suffered with obesity when I was a kid. Uh, life was pretty tough, um, but it was idyllic, you know, um, mum and dad and that, you know, and brothers and sisters. Um, until I was about ten, uh, when my dad sat me down one day and said to me, look, you know, uh, I'm not your dad, mum's not your mum, we're your grandparents. And I was about ten years of age when this happened, and my world from that moment onwards was just turned upside down. Uh, my, my young mind was destroyed. Um, you know, my idyllic childhood was no, no longer idyllic. I just couldn't make, make sense of things. It was, I think I was just too young to be, to be told that kind of thing. Uh, you know, but anyway, um, I just went off the rails from then, on, then, then onwards. Um, by the time I was 14, I was playing truant from school. I was sniffing solvents. Um, I think I'd smoked my first cannabis joint by the time I was 15. Um, and everything for me was about getting stoned or getting high. And uh, I, I was dealing with a bit of pain over this uh, childhood re revelation. And um, I think uh, that's the reason why I started taking drugs the way I did. But um, the rebelliousness went on up until the age of 18. I, I was bringing the police to the door week in, week out. My grandparents said enough of it. Um, by the time I went to prison for the first time to Felton's Young Offenders Institution, um, uh, I, I'd been arrested numerous times and been in and out of all the local police stations. And my grandparents, God bless them, were just about sick to the teeth of it. And when I came out of jail at the age of 19, from Felton and went home, uh, thinking that your parents would welcome me back with open arms. They bluntly told me that we don't want you back. You know, you've led us a miserable life up until now. You know, we, we don't want you back here. Piss off. So, you know, I was, yeah, forced on to the job. Well, I was just homeless. I made my way to King's Cross because um, that's where all the homeless hostels were and bed and breakfasts and the tramps hung out and. You know, and I, I couldn't think of anywhere else to go. I didn't want to put myself on to my friends because I was in an embarrassing situation. So I was then homeless and living in hostels and bed and breakfasts for many years, uh, right up until the age of 28. Uh, when I had to move back home to look after my grandfather, my grandmother had died and my grandfather was disabled. Um, if I didn't look after him, move in and look after him, he, he would have gone into a care home. So, anyhow, he'd been a young, fit man once upon a time now. He was an old man, he was very ill, and he was taking his illness out on me. You know, I, I was uh, lazy, good for nothing, and every swear word and C word you can think of, that's what he called me. And in the end, I believed it. I was a use useless, nothing, good for whatever. Um, and I just went into an heavy depression. Um, and to elevate my depression, I'd break into the shops of the West End and take the cash, and I, I used to leave a lot of cash, I used to get two and a half thousand pound cash out of some places, and I'd get that a couple of times each month, plus whatever other money. I'd, I took 80 thousand pound out of the West End in five months when I had it all up. Um, that was two decades ago, it seems a long time ago now. Um, but yeah, so eventually my grandfather died, um, and I was in and out of jail, uh, you know, I wasn't the greatest burglar, I was in and out of jail, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and eventually my grandfather died and I got rehashed off the back of it. And as I say, I was in and out of jail, so rent arrears would accumulate. And, you know, eventually I lost this lovely flat that I'd got rehashed into off the back of my grandfather's death. Um, and then I was homeless again. So I was 28 then. I was homeless then, right up until the age of 41, which I'm 43 now. So, yeah, so... When I was out burgling one night, burgling at a building site of all places, I fell and broke my ankle, and as a result, arthritis kicked in. 
and I'd be on crutches for six months at a time. And off the back of that, I was uh, awarded medical points for reaction, and I was put into uh, temporary accommodation. Um, and that's when I got my dog, George. Um, I was putting some homeless people up at the time, and they went out one day. They already had a dog with them, a sheep dog. They went out one day to do a bit of begging at Tower Hill, and they come back with their dog and George. And some mad Scotchman had sold George to them for the price of a strong can of lager. And uh, they said, yeah. They said, look, uh, you know, we, we'll give you £20, but on the strength and condition that you don't come back in six months' time and try and ask for this dog back. No, mate, the dog's yours. So anyhow, they come back to me with the dog, and they, like, we were moving out a few days later um, into an hostel. Because uh, he was only with me for a few days. So they said to me one day, John, do you want George? Because we can't take him to the place we're going to. We can only take our dog. Um, so on the spur of a moment, on a spur of a whim, I took George. I had a really bad drug problem at the time. Like, I was on heroin and crack cocaine, injecting it. I wasn't washing for months at a time. I was wearing the same clothes for three months at a time. Uh, I wasn't in a good place. And I took this dog on. The next morning, I woke up, my head in my hands. And I couldn't believe what I'd done. Eventually got uh, Riaz to, uh, got Riaz proper to sh into Shoreditch. Uh, by this time, government were capping all the benefit system, they were stopping all the sickness benefits. I lost my sickness benefit. Uh, I'd appealed it so much, in the end I weren't getting any benefit anymore. They were paying my rent, then they stopped paying my rent. And I was forced onto the street to beg. I'd been a thief all my life. I'd, you know, I was too proud to beg, but that's what I had to do. I'm on crutches. What can I do? I can't duck and dive. And even if I could, I wouldn't want to because I'd lose my dog. I'd go to jail, I'd lose my dog. So I had to beg on the streets. I was sat on the streets for a few months begging. I'd put George, I'd put sit George down, put a cup in front of him. It looked like he's doing the begging. I'd, I'd move away. Um, and uh, I've done that for a few months. Got a bit bored of that. I'm a naturally gifted artist. I decided to pick up a pen and, and start drawing. Started drawing the buildings opposite me. Um, one day someone asked for a picture of George. I drew a picture of him and then m more people asked for a picture of him. At the same time I was building up like this cult status with my drawings in Shoreditch. So there was a real buzz going around Shoreditch about my drawings. And I forgot to tell you, I'd only been sat there two months drawing when I got published alongside Tracy Emin and Gilbert and George in a book called Shoreditch Unbound. Um, and up until that point I had no purpose in life and I was asking that question, why am I here? What is my purpose in life? You know. Um, and when I got this book and opened it up, and there's Gilbert and George, uh, Tracy Emin, and all the other creative types, Boy George, the singer was in it, all the other creative types of Shoreditch. Anyhow, when I opened up my section, it was two pages of my drawings, John Dolan, street artist. And I knew then what my purpose in life was. Um, so I, I, it gave me the inspiration to carry on drawing. There was loads of interest going on at the time. And, and then my agent, uh, Richard Ad Griffin, of the Richard Ad Griffin Gallery in Shoreditch, eventually came along. I had this idea for me to draw the Shoreditch skyline. And that's the picture you see behind the blue, the blue Buddha type guy in the drawing there. And we got it printed up 36, no, 46 times. Uh, the original print and sent it to street artists all around the world and then they'd done their thing. That picture there is a collaboration with the Broken Fingers crew. They're a street artist that do their thing all around Shoreditch in London. But yeah, the show went on to... The show that I had off the back of this collaboration uh, work with these street artists went on to be a sellout show and it turned me into a critically acclaimed artist. And off the back of it, I was, like, I was on the news and stuff and radio and Jack Fogg uh, from Random Mass, he's now my book editor, he saw me um, on the news and decided to come and sign me up for a book deal, give me an advance. And uh, I'm now an author, and my book is now in the Sunday Times bestsellers list. And basically, I'd say, I, I, I was in a revolving door where my life was going nowhere. I was in a revolving door of, of homelessness and prison. I'd come out of prison, I'd be homeless. Go back into prison, I'd come out of prison, I'd be homeless again. That went on for years, and I never ever thought I could break that cycle. And I turned my life around just by sitting down and picking up a pen and using a talent that was natural to me. And I turned my life around in, I think it was two years, or a year, it might have even been shorter than that, but it was phenomenal. Um, and my story's gone viral, and I'm known all around the world uh, with my art, and my book's being sold all around the world. And that's it, really. But sort of my message is to to you know anyone that ever watches this and they're in the same situation I am, a revolving door of homelessness and, and prison. 
Basically, don't give up because I'm the last person who you would have thought would have turned his life around. I can guarantee you that. And if I can turn my life around, anyone can, no matter how, how down you are. Basically, never give up. Um, always believe in yourself and always have hope. All right? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.